Apple and um, welcome to the Lift for Podcast. Once again, it's your boy, it's your host, it's Tyrone, and I'm here. And um, the co host is not here, co host is not here today because uh, he didn't want to be here. Co host didn't want to be here today because this this topic, you know, I did, I, I sprung it on him, I didn't fucking uh, what is it to say? I didn't plan it right. I didn't um map it out. I didn't tell him. He just kind of got an episode that was sprung. So the co-host ain't here. He was too upset. He was too emotional about this episode. He didn't want to. He didn't want to join it. He didn't want to uh, participate in it. So um. So I'm here on my own. I'm here on my own. And today's episode is called BS is right. BS is right. Now BS stands for Bishop Sycamore. Because uh, that was the name of the high school. Well, the name of the fake high school. I'll get into it. I'll let you know. Calm down. That was the name of the fake high school that was created for what it was created for. But my saying is BS is right because BS stands for bullshit. BS stands for bullshit. And bullshit is correct when when talking about this topic here. Okay. But first of all, I want to direct y'all to the fact that... um. There is a, uh, what is it called? Let me see, what is it called? There's a documentary, a, a documentary. There's a documentary on HBO Max, which is now just Max, so it's just Max right now. And there's a documentary called BS High School on Max. And even though I'm going to give you the rundown, even though I'm going to give you the rundown, and even though I'm going to give you the, the, you know, I'm going to talk about this, you need to go and watch that documentary to get the real deal, the real deal, holy field, the true story, the everything that you need to know about. About this story is on that fucking documentary on on Max. You need to get on over there, and you need to um watch that documentary. But right now we're gonna talk about the shit. First of all, before we even talk about, it, we're gonna get too wild. Brought it up. It was a few years ago that uh, Bishop Sycamore High School played uh, IMG High School on uh, on ESPN, and they got trounced fifty eight to nothing, and it was a debacle, and it was it was a sad day. And a bad day for those students of Bishop Sycamore. But that's all we thought it was at first. And then the stories came out. All the stories came out that it was uh that Bishop Sycamore was a fake high school. And that and that shit came out. And we we heard about that. And you know, we knew about that story a little something, something. We didn't know the big deal. And we let it go. It kind of got swept under the rug. It kind of just disappeared, went away, whatever. That was a few years back. But um I got disgusted because I saw a picture of Joe Button. I saw a picture of Joe Buttons, and Joe Buttons was in the picture, and he was going, you know, the myth, the man, the legend, or whatever he said, and he was with Coach Roy. And I knew Coach Roy was the guy who orchestrated that whole Bishop High School, Bishop Sycamore High School fucking uh, game. He was the coach for that game. I remember that. I knew that. I was like, that's the dude from the Bishop High School super uh, team. So I was like, why the fuck is he getting big up? Why is Joe Button's bigging this man up? Why is Joe Button giving prop to this man? And I was kind of a little bit taken aback and a little bit upset about it. And I said, you know what? You know what? Because I, I just want to know what's going on. So then I found out that there was a documentary on it. So I said, let me let me watch this shit. Let me not let me not pass judgment on Joe Buttons just because I don't like him. Not that I don't like I don't like Joe Buttons. I don't care for Joe Buttons. First of all, let's get on Joe Buttons. He talks the shit about people in their careers. When his career with what he was doing in rap didn't blow up, his career wasn't that great in rap. And then and then he was on Love and Hip Hop. And I'm sorry, but even though the uh the physical abuse of women, even though the physical abuse of women is alleged, I watched him on live TV on Love and Hip Hop, mentally and verbally abused women. So even though the physical abuse is alleged, we ain't gonna go on that. But he's mentally and verbally abused women, particularly young women, particularly women that are younger than him. But Joe Buttons was dating women that weren't nowhere near his age group, and abusing these women. And and I didn't like that, and I don't like Joe Buttons. And then when men stepped to him, he, he talked that tough shit. But when men really stepped to him in an environment where he could be stepped to, he didn't do shit. He wasn't gangsta. He ain't about that life. You know what I mean? So I don't I don't fuck with Joe Button for real. But I didn't want to pass judgment on him for this. I didn't want to talk shit on him for this. I didn't want to hate on him for this, even though I thought that Coach Roy was a was a, a fucked up person to big up. 
I thought Coach Roy was a fucked up person to be around. I thought Coach Roy was a fucked up person to give a platform to, to have on your show, to do anything with. I, I don't want to associate with that motherfucker, you know. Fame ain't everything, you know what I mean? Interviews ain't everything, you know what I mean? And then I was kind of like, like, uh, why did HBO even give him this documentary? But I go ahead when I watch the documentary, and I understand what HBO was doing. HBO was trying to shed light on it. They wasn't talking about him in a good light. They wasn't talking about him in a good way. They were saying, hey, dude, you, you're, you're a liar. You're a crook. You're, you're a con artist. You, you're a fucked up person, aren't you? And they was interviewing him to try to say, like, dude, you're fucked up. Dude, we letting these people know what you've done. Do you want to show some remorse? Do you want to do you do you want to feel better about yourself? Do you want to like address this? Do you want to like give us the real reasons and all of this shit? And it just it just went from there. But after I watched the documentary, I went back. Joe Buttons definitely is a piece of shit. Well, he didn't do his research. Cause ain't no way you gonna have this man. I would never have this man on this podcast. I don't give a fuck about that thing, bro. I can't have this man on my show. I can't sit across from Coach Roy and have a conversation with him. I can't sit across from Coach Roy and have him spit anything on any of my microphones. I spit on him enough. Yeah, I said I spit on him enough. But I can't sit across from that man and have him have him say anything. I can't give that man no kind of light on my platform other than degrade him and disrespect him. That's what I'm gonna do here. That's what I'm gonna do here. So if he wants to come on and listen podcast and get disrespected, he can show up. Because the things that I might say to him or about him. He might get these hands. I might have to put paws on this man. I don't want to be nowhere near this man. I don't, I don't really, yeah. like I'm doing this to let y'all know that HBO did it and HBO tried to put it out there, but they ain't do it right. They didn't put the emphasis on it. They ain't say it how the list is going to fucking say it right here and that right now today. Cause this shit crazy, right? So Joe Buttons, I don't have no respect for you, bro. Cause if you're going to have guests on your fucking show, do your motherfucking research. If you're going to have guests on your show, figure out who these guests are, figure out what they're about. Because they represent you. No matter what you say, you bring them on the show. They represent you in some kind of way. You can put your disclaimers out. You can do all you want. But everybody know your claim to fame is represented by that. That's why, like, when people say, oh, they had Ku Klux Klan members on their show because they wanted to, like, nah. Nah. I don't give a fuck, bro. A Ku Klux Klan member can't sit across from me. Put these hands on them. Can't sit across from me because when you have a guest on your show, that motherfucker's supposed to be a guest, right? And if the motherfuckers are supposed to be a guest, there's supposed to be a level of respect and camaraderie between having a guest in your home or a guest on your show or a guest to be able to do the platform. And ain't, not, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Kruger's clan member can't be no guest. Ain't no way it's fucking Roy. Roy might as well. Coach Roy might as well be a clan member to me. Ain't no fucking way, bro. So, no, I'm disgusted with Joe Bunn. I'm disgusted. Like, do your research, and if you did your research, if you watched that fucking documentary, you did your research, you know about this man, don't, because because you had him on your show, bleh, throwing up, and then you're going to say the man, the coach, the legend, what legend, the legend of bullshit, the legend of fuck you, the legend of, I don't even know what to say, bro, I can't even get the words out, bro, I want to punch this screen, I want to fucking, that's why my co-host ain't here, because if my co-host was here, shit be going, I shit get broke. When my co-host is around sometimes when I'm in this kind of bag. Y'all know what I'm saying? When I'm in this kind of bag, shit get broke. My co-host probably would have got broke. I probably would threw that motherfucker on the floor and watch him shatter. Because of this shit right here, man. This is this is ridiculous. This is disgusting. This is why I say, like, black people, we got to do better. We got to do better than this motherfucker right here. Way better. I, I mean, this probably is the serious podcast ever thought I'm ever going to do. And yeah, I'm still going to say some fucked up shit because that's me. I'm going to fuck around because that's me. But but God damn, I don't want to though. I want to be, I want to be, mm, mm, I, I fuck, bro. Fuck. But let me get into it, right? Because I, I, I <laughs> okay. So it all starts out with supposedly, because I don't even believe that now. It all starts out with supposedly good intention. Okay? This man, Coach Roy's mom, was, was, was part of a nonprofit organization. She had a nonprofit organization or whatever that was supposed to be like educating black youth or helping black youth, whatever the case may be. I'm not sure about it. But she died, and he kind of inherited that name or whatever, that title of, of being part of the nonprofit or whatever. And he kind of had this stigma or this, or this thing about him where he said, he was going to help black youth, right? 
and he was doing programs and he that's how he was working. He was doing programs and working with churches and stuff like that, doing doing a lot of youth shit. Commendable shit, I guess. So he say, I don't believe nothing this motherfucker say now. He's a he's a, he's a liar, he's a kind artist, he's a cheat, he's a crook, he's a bitch, the fucked up person. I, I don't give a fuck. But that that was his pretense that that he was trying to do good, trying to do right in the communities or whatever. And he hooked up with this church of something. It was church of something. C O F was the church of whatever. And he hooked up with this church, right? And this church was like, "Hey, we wanna um we wanna start a school. We wanna like be a legit high school. We wanna get a legit high school started." And um he was like, "Okay, cool. We could we could." He could be a part of that program. And so the program was supposed to start a high school. He goes into the program and he convinces them that if they want to start a high school, that the best way to generate money, the best way to get sponsors, the best way to get uh, you know, money to come into the school, the best way to get help with this, because this is going to cost, you know, whatever it's going to cost, a million dollars, whatever. So whatever, you know, we got to get facilities, we got to do shit. So whatever we got to do to get this is be good to incorporate a football program. So the school was kind of with it. They was like, okay, maybe you can incorporate a football program. Okay, but we we, we want to get the school cracker first. And maybe once we get the school together, we start getting the kids in here. We start getting the academics and the teachers and all that shit settled, the building facilities. They had to get all that shit. You can't just start a school. So they're like, once we get all of this shit settled out, in two or three years, we can incorporate a football team. Let's do a year worth of academics, get the teachers, get the school, get everything in order. And then maybe in a year or two, we could do a football team. But this motherfucker was supposed to be part of this, getting this school together, getting a new school together for black children, mostly black children, to come in and learn and, 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 and get educated and all of this shit. That's what this, that's what this church wanted to do. So he was supposed to be a part of that. He goes and gets a partner and says, hey, man. Uh, this church wants to do this school and I am in charge of incorporating the football program. I'm in charge of incorporating the football team. What's up? And the guy was giving them the basics, giving them the logistics, giving them everything he needed to know about making the court in this football team. And then he said that the guy told him, I mean, he said, coach Roy told him that he wanted a facility with, you know, with basketball courts and all kinds of shit. And this guy was telling him like, yo man, you talking about millions and millions of dollars. You know, but yeah, in a couple of years, we can uh, get this shit. We can get this shit popping in a few years. You know, I'll help you out. You know, what I mean, let's see what the school going to do first. And in a year or two, whatever, we're going to get this shit popping. Then the guy says, like, they want, he said, hey, I found this indoor training facility. And the guy said, oh, indoor training facility for what? You know, what I mean, this dude was like, what, what are you talking about, bro? And then next thing he knows, he goes there. And he said, the bus full of kids came in and he and he said, Coach Roy basically told him, this is the motherfucking football team. And he said, first of all, how did you get a football team? Second of all, where the fuck are these kids from? Third of all, how, are these kids in the school? Is the school even started yet? Like, there wasn't even a school yet. There was a football team for a school that wasn't a fucking school yet. And the boss said, that's when he said, I'm out. I mean, I don't want no part of this, man. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. I don't know where these kids came from. I don't know what, the, the, you know, what is this? This ain't no school. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Right? And he had this associated with the church that was supposed to be doing the school. That's what he said. They were sponsoring it. It was, it was their thing. He was, he was legit putting that church's name on shit. He legit uses that church name as the name of the school. He legit did that, right? Where did he get the kids from? Y'all want to know where the fuck he got these kids from? He got these kids from troubled homes. Some of them had troubled homes. Some of them were homeless. Some of them were fucked up academically and, and weren't able to play high school football, so were ineligible for college scholarships and things of that nature. Some of them were high school dropouts. Some of them had already finished high school. Already fucking finished high school. Already graduated. Some of them was in GED programs. Needless to say, he went and made calls to children across the country, black, young black men across the country that, that, that had trouble with their education, trouble with their football eligibility, 
trouble with getting to college and, and possibly getting to the NFL where they wanted to be. They had they had trouble with all these things. He went and found them across the country and brought them in, promising them a livelihood. Not not a livelihood like to live, but promising them like a place to live, roof over their head, food, promising them that they're going to get an education, promising them that they're going to play high school football, high school football, and be allowed to showcase themselves to colleges, be allowed to get college scholarships, be allowed to go to these colleges and possibly go to the NFL. And these kids dreamed of that. These, these, these kids dreamed. And half of these kids thought, oh, won't he do it? Yes, he will. God is good all the time. Because they thought they was getting a second chance. Thought they was getting a second lease on life. Thought they was getting somebody who cared for them, was going to help them out, put them in a better place, better space. And these kids convinced their parents. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, I got a juice here. Let me take a sip real quick. Sorry about that. These kids convinced their parents, whoever, dad, mom, grandma, whoever was in their life, convinced them, hey, man, this man over in Ohio has got this school. He's going to get us our high school eligibility. He's going to let us play football. He's going to let us um go ahead on and be NFL prospects. You know what I mean? They was making promises. Grandma, when I come back, grandma, you're going to get that house. Dad, I promise you, man, I'm going to do good. I'm going to make it to the NFL. Mom, you know, everybody. Everybody's getting promises. These whole kids, a lot of these, he's trying to eat. He's Changing these kids' lives. He's a hero in the community. Great dude. Great guy. Everything is going great. We're going to do this thing, right? And he busts all these kids over from all over the country, Texas, Florida, everywhere. Bust these kids into Ohio. Gave them a place to live. And uh, <clears throat> and was setting them up with a second chance opportunity to show them, show, showcase themselves to college, possibly get to college and all that. And this is not what this man was doing. This man didn't even have a school at all. He just was using the, the pretense of the church possibly starting a school to say there was a school. He took these kids to a local library and said this is where they were going to have classes. They had a, a space in this local library where they were going to have classes. No classes. How are you going to have class? You don't have no teachers. How you gonna have a teacher? You don't have no salary for to pay the motherfucking teacher because the church ain't started the school yet. You know what I mean? How the fuck is, is all this supposed to go on, right? So these kids come here and they don't have class, they don't have teachers, they don't have nothing going on, they're not learning shit. All they have is an indoor practice facility that they go to to practice and play football. That's all they have. That's all they have, right? And these kids don't care. They don't give a fuck. Because in reality, they're still children. They're still young-minded. They're still able to be manipulated. They still don't know what the fuck is going on. And when you tell a kid, hey, you don't have to go to school, but you can play football on a high school football team, but you don't really have to go to school. You don't have to do no homework, no grades. You don't have to listen to no teachers, do no nothing. And everything's going to be taken care of. You're going to get a high school diploma. You're going to be offered scholarships from colleges. You're going to be able to play high school football and possibly college football, and you don't have to do shit but play football? These kids was with it. They believed him. They they believed in that dream, that hope, that everything, and this was what they, they put all their eggs in that basket because they was like, this is it. This is it. You know what I mean? They was in on it, and they dumb. I mean, not not saying they mentally stupid. You know what I mean? But they dumb, though. They, not, they naive. They not... They, they haven't learned nothing. They haven't lived no fucking life. They ain't been out in these streets for real. Well, some of them been living out in the streets, but you know what I mean? You know what I mean? They not, they not fuck with it. They, they, you dangle the carrot and they go for it. Silly rabbit tricks are for kids. Poor kids, exactly. Right? So this man goes about having football games. He somehow manipulates some money together to get, get, get equipment, helmets. Shit like that. He went to his mom's nonprofit. This man bounced some checks. This man faked some shit, lied about some shit, committed some larceny, some crimes, got helmets, got some equipment, got these kids working out, and 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 got them actually on football fields. 
schedule actual football games, had them play actual football games under this, this, this name of this church as a school that they went to. Nobody checked any transcripts. Nobody checked to see if these kids had report calls. Nobody talked to these kids' teachers. Nobody talked to these kids' fucking uh, principals and that and to figure out the grades. Nobody even called the fucking church. Right? And this one on, they played a whole season of football. And nobody checked. And then the church finally went, hey, dude, hey, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, how is it, is it a football team? Playing football in the our name our church, we don't even have no school. And then they went, you know what? You know what? We we start in a school, but we're we're not affiliated with this football team. We don't have nothing to do with this football team. We don't know these kids. We don't, they're not enrolled in any school or any program or anything we fucking doing. Fuck out of here. That's it. And when that happened, you would think that Coach Ron would go, okay, fine. I fucked up. I tried it. We had a good season, kids. We had a good time. Go ahead, pack y'all bags, go the fuck back home, tell your mom, you know, it didn't work out. Possibly some of them would have had a chance to go back to high school. Possibly some of them would have had a chance to work something out back back where they went. Possibly some of them would have been able to do some things. You know, it, it could have worked out it, it, for some of them had he not took it too far. But he didn't fucking give up. Matter of fact, this man doubled down. This man just said, fuck it, then. We're not with the church no more. Yeah, he, he, he realized he didn't use the church anyway. He realized that nobody called the church. He realized nobody checked the grades. He realized nobody checked on to see if the church was real, the school was real, nothing. He realized that he could forge or write or type or sign all the paperwork and nobody wasn't going to do nothing about it. He realized there was no laws against it. That's the craziest part. There's no laws against faking a school. No laws at all. So he realized that, you know what I mean? He don't need an actual front man. He don't need an actual school. He don't need an actual church. He don't need anybody to say anything. All he got to do is say, hey, this is the school. These kids go to this school and, and bingo, Pacino. So instead of sending these, doing the right thing and sending these kids home, instead of admitting that he fucked up, instead of going back to the church and saying, okay, fine, I'll stop the football program. Can y'all really start these school though? Can y'all really have this school? Can these young men really attend this school and possibly, maybe, like y'all said, in a year have a football team? Or can we keep the football team y'all really do the school and we really get sponsors and do this shit the right way? Can we do that? He didn't try to do none of that shit. You know what he did? He just said, fuck it. Double down. Okay, this school, the church ain't part of the school now. It ain't part of the school now. So now, now the church is just, uh, the church ain't part of the school now. Now, now the school's Bishop Sycamore. And that's all he did. Now the school is Bishop Sycamore. He got another partner. And the funny thing about this, the funny thing about this is that this grown man with a wife, not Coach Ryan, but his new partner, a grown man, he's on a documentary talking about being grown. He's on a documentary talking about being a man. He's on a documentary talking the same shit about Coach Ryan. Like the same shit Coach Ryan is talking about, how he wanted to help these kids and all that. And he's still there sitting next to Coach Ryan, still trying to justify what they done. Rolled him out the whole time. Started the whole Bishop Sycamore thing. Was there for all of the bullshit. And he's still sitting there saying, man, we really did try to help these kids. Coach Ron was really trying to help these kids. I was really trying to help these kids. We were really trying to build something. We were really trying to give these kids a second chance. Like, motherfucker, what? You should have got as far away from that motherfucker as you possibly could. You're not, you're not, you're not making yourself look good, bro. You tainting your name as well. You bought into this man's bullshit. Everybody bought into his bullshit. And you was right there bought into the bullshit too. You know what I'm saying? Bought all the way into it. You know what I mean? So, so that was that situation, right? And that's what happened. And they doubled down and they started this school. And I was like, damn, this is fucked up. But the shit gets worse. This shit gets worse. So now he's got Bishop Sycamore, and now he don't have no money, no sponsors, no nothing. And he's got kids from all across the country that have to live there during the school year, right? So what does this motherfucker do? Well, well, well. He takes them to hotels or an apartment complex in various different places to live, and he moves them in there. And then they go, okay, we're here. We're here. And they don't pay no rent, no bills, no nothing. They don't pay shit. 
The whole time they're there, they don't pay nothing because he realized that an eviction takes 90 days, right? So he gets them in there, and then within the 90 days, they get evicted, but the eviction takes 90 days, and guess what? By the time 90 days is up, they've already played a full fucking football season. In the three or four months it takes for them to get evicted, they already played a full football season. And you know what he spends to these kids? Oh, the season's over. You guys can go. The season's over. The school year's over. You guys can go home for the summer. Come back next year. If you don't have a home to go to for the summer, you can stay here and we'll put you, set you up. But you can still can got to play football next season, next semester, whatever the case may be. So he's just going from hotel to hotel, apartment complex to apartment complex, getting, getting kicked out, getting evicted with these kids. And, and just letting them live all fucked up. Then on top of that, there's no money. There's no money whatsoever. These kids are not even getting fed. Like not even eating dinner. Like he would bring them some kind of oatmeal. It was like some shit. In the, you know, in the end, when they're like, it's the hard knock life for us. It's the hard knock life. And they was in the orphanage and they were giving them that shit. They look like oatmeal that flop. These kids that they was eating shit like that. Look like oatmeal. Look like flop. These kids that they was going to Walmart intentionally stealing food to have shit to eat because this man couldn't even feed them. But yet and still, you're like, why didn't you go home? Why didn't you call mommy? Why didn't you call daddy? They could not call their parents because they still wanted to live this dream. They still believed that this man was working for them. They still believed that this man was going to let them live their motherfucking dream. They still believed that they was going to the NFL. They still believed that they was going to play college football. They still had all of their hopes and their dreams, and their beliefs of what they was going to be, they still had it in them. So they didn't want to call them on back. Because if they would call me, you know what I mean? Oh, let's just imagine. Let's just imagine this was Bashir. And he called me and said, Dad, can you send me some money for dinner? Dad, can you send me a couple of dollars? Dad, we got evicted. We got to move to another place. Any of those circumstances. And I would have been like, son, bring your fucking ass home. We ain't got time for this shit. Bring your ass home, get your motherfucking GED, and come on out here and do this construction shit, boy, because I'm not fucking around. I ain't got time to play with you. Or, or, worst case scenario, I would get in my car in Philadelphia. And Ohio ain't that far from Philly, bro. I get in my car and drive the fuck on over there, and me and Coach Ryan going to have a few kinds of motherfucking stations. You can't feed my boy? He's playing football. He's supposed to have vitamins. He's supposed to have protein. He's supposed to have all kinds of shit. He's exercising, playing football, putting pads on all this. Where are these doctors at? Y'all got my son out here being malnutrition and playing fucking a dangerous sport like football? Y'all got my son playing football and he out here malnutrition? Y'all can't feed him. I'm damn sure y'all don't got no motherfucking Gatorade on that court. If my, I mean, on the field, you know what I mean? If my son on the football field drinking bowling basket water from, from Chopper? Is that what y'all doing? Y'all getting my son water from the local fresh growth for the little ones? And he's playing football? The fuck is going on? Nah, nah, no. So so they couldn't call their daddy? I sure would have never been able to call me in this situation. Fuck no, hell to the no. To the no, no, no. So these kids is there just suffering, just doing whatever, just being, just doing whatever. They doing whatever. They risking it all because they believe that they're going to get the benefit of it. The carrot's dangling and they reaching for it. Because they believe they're going to get that carrot and they believe they're going to eat that carrot. But guess what? Guess what? Tricks are for kids. Tricks are for kids. And that's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I mean. Like, that is like the most, I don't, I don't even understand how he can get away with that. I don't understand how he can get away with that. Like, the parents, and then, and then it's like this too. I blame the parents a little bit too. I do. I blame the parents a little bit, too, because me, I'm the type of parent that'll be like, yo, yo, where's your motherfucking report call? But fuck football, because I'm in my mind said like, yo, what if you break your motherfucking leg? What if you tear your Achilles? What if you break, you know, what if you get a con- too many concussions or something and you got to bring your black ass home? I need some transcripts. I need some report cards. I need to make sure you at least got an education while you was the fuck over there. So I'm going to call up. Hey, can I speak to the principal? Can I speak to the, I'm not calling your school and check on my son to pre, to speak to no fucking football coach. Hello, this is Coach Ryan. Coach Ryan, yeah, let me speak to the principal. Why? Wow, I want to know about my son's motherfucking grade. I don't want to know about his football. I can, I, I can come to, you, you're playing a whole bunch of teams. I can come to his football games. 
I've been to two games already. You ain't even seen me. I've been to two motherfucking football games already. I ain't seen a teacher. I ain't seen a coach. I, uh, I ain't seen no cheerleaders. I ain't seen a doctor. I ain't seen nothing. And, you know, a lot of these people were poor, so a lot of these people couldn't get, you know, a lot of these parents couldn't make it to the football games. But like I said, I'm in Pennsylvania. I drive right to Ohio. What's up? What's up? I want to see my son play. But a lot of these kids couldn't even have their parents come to the games because, they, you know, they was in another state or whatever and money tight. And it ain't right. But but I do blame some of these parents because y'all didn't y'all didn't check up on y'all children. And I do understand if some of y'all children was um problem children and you were like, just go ahead on. And I do understand that some of these children want children. We'll get to that later. So then um when the kids started saying, hey, dude, you know, what's up with school? What's up? He he got them in a program called Youth Build. Now, I know because Youth Build was in Philadelphia. My sister was in Youth Build for a little while. Youth Build is a program where children go there and they learn a trade. And while they're learning the trade, like carpentry or whatever, they, they help these children get their GED. So they can go there, learn a trade, and get a GED. But Youth Build does not have football teams. Youth Build does not have college programs. They don't have all this stuff. That you're supposed to have for these kids to live their dream. So when he got them enrolled and got some of them to go to youth build, he couldn't put youth build on, on their on their thing for their high school because youth build does not associate with that kind of stuff. So when he was trying to get more football games and, and put the high school in it, youth build didn't work out. So these kids never really got to even do that. The youth build would have been a good thing for these kids. At least if they would have gotten enrolled in youth build, they would have honestly got a GED. They would have honestly been toward a trade. They would have honestly had Somebody who can talk to their parents, somebody who could be responsible for them, somebody who can say, hey, yo, this football shit ain't right. This football shit is inappropriate. This football shit is fucked up. We don't know what your man is doing. But once again, fraudulent activity. And so you still didn't work out, right? No. So now it's like, what is going on with these kids? Because some of these kids are looking bigger than a motherfucker, even as I'm watching. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at these kids playing these games, and I'm like, these kids are huge. Some are huge. Some of them look good. Some they got mustaches. And they got beards and shit. I'm like, what? I know. I know you can have a mustache and a beard in high school, but you know, the difference between a, a regular mustache and a grown man mustache. You know, I mean, you could you could almost tell. You could see a little bit of difference, right? Some of these kids is 19 years old. 19 years old, you can still play. High school football. That's right. You still can. You're still eligible to play high school football because you still can go to football. You still can go to school at 19. Once you reach 20, you're supposed to be ineligible. But those grown-ups that was 19 years old, some of those kids already graduated from high school. Some of those kids already had high school diplomas. Some of those kids were in programs already that made them ineligible to attend high school and also ineligible to participate in high school athletics. But because they wanted a second chance, but because they thought they were getting that second chance, but because they wanted a way to showcase themselves to the to colleges, they said, fuck it. We're going to do it. Fuck it. We're going to do whatever it takes. These kids was out here risking it all. Like I said, they were risking being homeless. They were risking eviction. They were risking fucking not eating. They were risking everything. Young black men out here risking everything. For this man, because he fed them this dream, they were risking everything for this man that said he's going to take them to the mountaintop. And he was taking them no fucking way. He was, and then, and, 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 you know, it's the funny part, right? He was taking them nowhere. I'm, 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 no, we ain't going to get to the funny part yet. So now these kids have been um, getting evicted, not eating properly, no staff for real, nobody looking out for them, no parents, no teachers, no nothing. Everything, all their whole livelihoods was, was, was with this man and his fucking partner, right? And that's it. All of these kids' livelihoods was based on this man who was a stranger and his partner who really was a stranger. There was no graduates in 2019. There was no graduates in 2020. There was no graduates in 2021. So in three years, no motherfucking, not one kid graduated from this so-called school. Nobody looked into it. Nobody cared, right? And they were scheduling games. He hired a guy. He literally hired a man and said, listen, I want my high school football team to play some of the best high school football teams in the country. And this dude didn't do no research, didn't do no figuring it out or nothing. He said, oh, he checked all the paperwork. He checked all the stuff with the, with the governments. And the government said, yeah, they legit. 
That's a legit team. Yeah, they play legit games. Yeah, they got a legit schedule. And he went and got them matched up with all the top teams in the country. And these teams were going out there and playing them. And these was grown men playing high school football kids. Big ass grown men playing regular six, um, 17, 16, 15 year old young boys, right? And losing back. I mean, these little, these high school kids that was really playing real organized football, real structured football, in a real football program, in a real workout facility, in a real school doing their academics, in a real profitable prospect life, beating the shit out of these bitches. They ain't won not one game, and most of their um, losses was blowout. They were trying to play street football as opposed to organized football. Coach Ron didn't even know how to coach them. They didn't know real X's and O's. They didn't know real plays. They didn't know shit. They was just out there lining up and getting their motherfucking asses whooped, playing tackle football. Playing tackle football with pads and, and, and equipment on, with, with real coaches, against real coaches, against real teams that's structured, against real kids that's really working the fuck out and really dedicated to this football shit. And then in reverse, you all think, oh, these grown men is going to hurt these little kids. But no, nah, no, nah, them kids are about to hurt them grown men because them grown men ain't know what the fuck they was doing. They out there trying to play some old sheet street shit. Offensive line don't know how to block a motherfucker. Because they ain't used to blocking. They used to one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. You know how we play on the street. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi bullshit. That's what they doing. They out there playing some bullshit. Thinking they doing something. Thinking it means something. And these kids were still proud of themselves. They're like, yeah, we lost, but you know, I was give, I was out there giving it up though. I was trying. I was doing my best. Motherfucker, what? What? You know, and then it's like y'all proud to go on ESPN. Y'all the worst high school in the fucking country. Y'all ain't won not one game. And y'all get the ESPN. Why? Because IMG was so good. That regular, real high school football teams did not want to play them on TV. They was like, nope, we don't want to play IG. They couldn't find an opponent. ESPN wanted to broadcast that ING game, and they couldn't find an opponent, and they called him and said, hey, you know, I know you got a high school. Would y'all be willing to come play? And he said yes. He said yes. And he took his bullshit football team uh, to ESPN to play the top team in the country. And they played that team, and they lost 58 to nothing. Some of them got injured, right? They didn't even have trainers. Didn't have trainers, didn't have doctors. One of the kids' mom said she went out there. She was the trainer. They said, where's your trainers at? Where's your doctors? Where's your medical staff? Where's all these people at? And they were like, oh, we don't have none of that. It was one of the kids' motherfucking moms out there, right? The kids' mom out there. And guess what? This young boy then tore his fucking ACL on his knee. No medical staff, no nothing. It basically was, get this motherfucker off the field. We got to finish the game. That's what that's what happened. I feel lied to you now. I can't make this up. I lied. This is the truth. This is these are facts, right? And then uh, her son was the starting quarterback of the team. He got hurt. These kids are out here getting murdered on the football field with no medical staff. Just going back to the bench, going back out there. Her son wanted to go back out there. He was risking it for the biscuit, and it wasn't even no biscuit. Wasn't no business get the risk it for. Y'all on ESPN getting murdered. 58 to nothing, getting destroyed, getting killed. Not, no pro, no nothing, right? Fake ass school. And her son that was going, go back out there and play. Shoulder was out of pocket. He was going back out there. His mom said, hell to the now. James sent him back out there. So they sent this kid out there who was a backup quarterback, but he wasn't. He was, he was just like a wide receiver or something. He didn't know what he was doing. He got out there and got killed. The kid that tore his ACL, they like, number 54 is injured. He's touring his ACL. And then Nelson was like, wait a minute. Who's number 54? We don't even have a number 54 on our motherfucking schedule at all. We don't have a 54 on our schedule. There ain't no 50, ain't no number 54 in this whole fucking roster. These kids were sharing helmets. One of the parents said that her son was wearing a helmet that he wore from high school that didn't fit him back then. Wasn't regulated. Wasn't right. And they on the TV getting these helmets knocked off. Every which way, these helmets are flying around. They didn't have equipment. They're sharing helmets. They're sharing shit. And then this went on. They went all the way to ESPN with this shit. Crazy. Crazy, right? And this man is, is, is writing checks. This man is, is forging documents. This man is doing all kinds of shit. But here's the thing. So one of the moms said she took him to Kinko's to get the check to pay for the hotel and the travel expenses for them to be um to go up there to, uh, to the Hall of Fame and play that game in the ESPN. 
He paid for that shit with fraudulent checks, knowing that them checks was going to bounce thousands and thousands of dollars. Bouncing checks just to get these kids on TV. And for what? And for what? And here's the thing. When, when, when the documentary fucking asked this motherfucker, fucking said right to him, why the fuck did you do all of that shit? He didn't say I was legit. Well, he, he tried to spin it like he was legit helping these kids. But he said the real reason was because he was insecure. He did all of that shit because he wanted to feel good about himself. Writing fraudulent checks, breaking the law, fucking these kids' life up, fucking lying to these children, feeding them pipe dreams, dangling carrots, and all that stuff was to make this man feel good about himself. Coach Roy with somebody. I was on TV. Coach Ryan. I was on TV. I was on TV. People know who I am. Y'all talking to me right now. He said he said, y'all talking to me right now on the documentary, talking to me right now. And then fucking dumb ass, stupid ass, fucking not doing his research or not giving a fuck Joe Button got him on a podcast talking about him right now. That's what he did it for. He did it for everything y'all fucking give him. And HBO did it to expose him, but this motherfucker didn't even care about being exposed. He's on there talking big shit. And then to top it all off, these kids is finding out that on them evictions, he didn't use his real name. He used their names. Them kids got evictions on their records. Right? But that's not it. He told these kids that, hey, these school, this school is not free. This school is a tuition-based school, like a prep school. It's tuition. Y'all got to pay tuition, $16,000. Tuition to go here. And these kids are like, fuck it. We, we ain't got to get, we got to get the money. Can't ask our parents for the money. We can't get jobs. We can't do nothing. How are we going to get this money? Are we going to sell drugs? Are we going to sell a bot? What the fuck is we going to do to get this money? He told them, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the money for now. Y'all can still play football, but y'all going to have to run this cheese at a certain point in time. And you know what he told these kids to do during the pandemic? He told them, go ahead and get the PPP loan. He told these kids to get PPP loans. And them kids said, no, 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 man. We're not going to get no PPP loans. We don't want to do that. We, you know, and I mean, what, what the fuck are you talking about? So here's what he did. He said, oh, you got, you guys, this year, this year, you guys got to fill out paperwork. You got to fill paperwork out for the school because, because we need paperwork. We need your name on the paperwork. Put your name and your, and your numbers, your phone numbers, and your addresses and your social security numbers and all the shit on this paperwork. We need paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. And these kids filled out the paperwork. And then once again, they can't talk to their parents. They're they still risking it. they still thinking. they still believe in this motherfucker, right? They fill out the paperwork. Social security numbers, names, governments, all that shit. Boop, doop, boop, doop, boop, doop. Filling it out. They over 18. Some of them are over 18. So guess what? If you're over 18, guess what you can do? You can apply for PPP loans without your parents. You can apply for apartments without your parents. You can apply for all of that shit without your parents, right? The one young boy said, he said, I called my dad. When I filled out the paperwork, I called my dad. Then my dad told me, fuck them. Tell them, get rid of that paperwork. You don't want to sign that paperwork. Tell them, rip that shit up. He said he went back, talked to them. Said they told him, hey, they ripped that shit up. You don't got to worry about it. Paperwork's done. He, he's going to be done. Why does motherfucker got a PPP loan for $20,000? In his name. Because they ain't ripped that paperwork up. They kept that paperwork and they filed them fucking PPP loans in this kid's name. Why three of these kids got eviction notices on their fucking record? Can't even get motherfucking apartments to this day. Why? The one kid said his mom, he didn't even know. His mom said she's trying to get him an apartment. He said, well, when did you get evicted? Were you out here getting evicted and shit? He was in Ohio fucking getting evicted. He didn't know they got evicted on their own in his fucking name. Because guess what? The boy had evictions. So how he get to rent another apartment complex? How he get to rent his hotel? He got evictions. No, nah, because uh, Anthony Jones, Social Security number, blah, blah, blah. He don't got eviction. Find him out. Get him in there. Fake school. Let's go. Let's do it. So now he fucked these kids up. Some of these fucking kids can't get apartments. Still got to live with their mommies and daddies. Grown men now, because he fucked them up. Some of these kids owe the government fucking $25,000. Don't even know they even got a fucking loan. Where's that money at, bro? He's saying he ain't got no money. What the fuck is you doing then? What is going on here? What's going on here? You know what I mean? And the bottom line is this man don't have no fucking remorse. These kids is on the documentary, on video, saying, yo, bro, you fucked us. You fucked my whole life up. You fucked my dreams up. You fucked my career up. You fucked up everything about what I was trying to do and who I was trying to be. 
The one kid was crying. I hate you. Fuck you, Coach Ryan. Fuck you, you, you dirty. You a bad motherfucker. You fucked us up. Crying and shit. What does this motherfucker do? He gets up. I need a break. I need a break. Storms off from the documentary. Fucking leaves the interview, right? I'm thinking like, okay, this motherfucker feeling bad. Maybe he gonna cry. Maybe he gonna come back and show some remorse. Maybe he gonna say something respectable. He's outside and he's upset because he said these kids is disrespecting him. He comes back in talking about how these is ungrateful ass little niggas that he helped. How? In what world, you dumb fuck? And this big ass dumb homie right next to him, big ass dickhead, stupid ass, big for nothing motherfucker, is over there going, well, we was trying to help him. Motherfucker, what? Even if you were trying to help him, you didn't help him. And you fucking, and y'all both sitting here like, you know, see, that's what I'm saying. That's why I said they can never be guests of mine. As soon as that motherfucker would have came back and called them young boys, all them little kids, all them young black youth, as soon as he would have called them ungrateful motherfuckers, the table would have turned. Literally, the table would have turned. I ain't talking about turning the tables like karma. I'm talking about I would have flipped that fucking table over and one hand on my man's head, hands and feet, paws, possibly hammer time. Like, <laughs> no, who the fuck you talking to, dog? How the fuck is you even got the ball? To say that you said that because it was on HBO Max in front of them white folks that can't put hands on you, <laughs> niggas over here. You come to the list of the podcast. This is my shit. I don't care. I don't care. Cause I tell people now. I, I, you know, last week I was just in the mindset that if anybody fuck with me in 2023, it's hell, home, or prison. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going. I'm going to hell. I'm going home. I'm going to prison, which means I can go home if you can work it out, talk this shit out. We can go home. But I'm willing to go to hell, which means that, hey, we got to do what we got to do. Whatever I do, I know I'm going to hell for. And you're going to have to send me there if we go there. And I and, and if you can't send me there, what I'm going to do to you going to definitely send me to prison. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to hell home to prison. And for these kids, for these youth, for what that man did to think he'd be able to sit in front of me and talk that shit he was talking. Yeah, I'm on that three. It's one of those three, brother. And home ain't looking good for him or me. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about it. Because that's fucked up. No remorse, though. You can't say sorry. You can't be sad about it. And then he's on the documentary talking about how because he was on ESPN, because he was on the documentary, because he's being interviewed, because people know who he is now, that he's going to be able to get sponsorships. That he's going to be able to do this shit again. He's blatantly saying that he'll do it again. No remorse. Fucking totally unapologetic at all. Like, don't even give a fuck, bro. And his big homie sitting right next to him, still still riding. If I was his wife, I would have fucking divorced him. You fucking, you playing on our family, bro. I'm your wife. I go to work and people was looking at me. Mm-mm. She probably at work in her cubicle right now having some old black bitch across from her go, mm-mm, mm-mm, don't talk to me, bitch. Talk to your husband. Probably getting blackballed like shit at work. They probably spitting in her coffee. All kinds of shit probably happening to this man's wife because he's sitting on this documentary being a dumb motherfucker. Riding for a nigga that did all this shit to black men, young black kids. And I'm about to end this, but I'm about to end this with the worst motherfucking part of the whole thing. The worst part of the whole thing is that this kid that played quarterback for his fucking fake-ass football team, this kid who played quarterback for the football team, who had his mom involved, had his mom driving around, had his mom using her car, had his mom using her money, had his mom being the personal trainer going on on the field, had his mom there at the games trying to look out for them, trying to protect them, trying to figure out what's going on with these kids and what's going on with his money and these paychecks and all of the bullshit. His mother was involved, right? And when that shit hit the fan, she took her son back home. Took his son back home, had him working out, got him a connection with Grambling University, got him a fucking scholarship offer with Grambling, got him to commit to the school and everything. The, the uh, Huey Brown, or whatever I, yeah, I think his name is Huey Brown, I'm, the coach that used to coach Texans, he came back, he came back to college, he was coaching Grambling University. He was a quarterback dude. He said he loved this kid. Kid had good size. Kid had good skill. Kid could actually really play football. Just was in a fucked up situation over there, right? He offered him an opportunity to go to Grambling, go on a football team, play for Grambling. Kid was happy, committed. His mom was happy. She was like, yes, something finally going to work for us. Something finally going to be great for us. We finally, we're going to get it, put this in our path. We're going to go. 
They didn't know about the Bishop Sycamore shit when they offered him that offer. Grambling University found out about that Bishop Sycamore shit, found out that he was on that team, found out that this kid didn't really go to high school, found out this kid didn't really play out on a high, he played on a fake ass high school football team. What did Grambling do? They rescinded the offer, took it back. No, you can't go. Fuck this kid up mentally, fucked him up financially, fucked him up with his mom, everything. Fuck this, like, fuck this whole life up. Like, and, and they showed this man this thing on the fucking documentary. He don't give a fuck. And this kid's crying. This kid's life is all fucked up, messed up. He, he lost the opportunity to Grambling University behind your bullshit. You don't care. And Joe Buttons apparently don't seem to care. HBO, I know what they were doing. Bomani Jones was on there talking big shit about him. So I know what they was doing. I know HBO was doing this for exposure and, and not to big him up. They kept saying to him, you don't think you're a kind artist. You don't think you're a fucking liar. You don't think you're a piece of shit. HBO was basically saying, like, you're a piece of shit. You're a dirty, rotten motherfucker. Bomani Jones was basically like, yo, yeah, motherfucker, like, you're crazy. And the crazy part about it was that there's no laws against nothing that he did. Yeah, that all of the money, all of the money to bounce checks and all that stuff, that stuff will get him, you know, misdemeanor, court trial stuff. Most of the most of it is just gonna be lawsuits. He's just gonna get sued for all the money, like a motherfucker, collections, agencies, you know, income taxes, all that shit. Maybe they going they everybody gonna be suing him, but this motherfucker ain't gonna got no criminal record, ain't gonna do no jail time. He's out now free talking shit. Going on podcasts, going on world tour, talking about it, getting famous and shit. He's doing that right now. Can't put him in prison. You know why? Because no laws was made against what he done. Because nobody in their right mind thought that anybody would ever do such a thing. People know people was going to murder motherfuckers. It's just in human nature. Some people going to murder motherfuckers. People know motherfuckers is going to steal because anybody get desperate enough is going to steal. People know that people are going to have car accidents. So that's why they have traffic laws. People know that people are going to get divorced and do things, adultery. That's why they have laws against stuff that they know people are going to do. Nobody in their right mind thought that a motherfucker, we need to make a law against a motherfucker faking a school and, and, and building a high school football team and frauding everybody. They didn't make no law against that because they never thought that anyone would fucking do this. And here it is now. It's been done. These kids' lives have been fucked up. And, and nobody seems to give a fuck. HBO tried to expose them. Joe Buttons is giving him a platform and, and calling him a legend? Calling him a myth? A man? A legend? Fucking taking pictures with him? Propping this dude up? Standing there looking proud? Joe Buttons, you don't look proud. You look like a dumb motherfucker, man. You look like somebody who niggas shouldn't be listening to. You look like... You look worse than you look on Love and Hip Hop. Because on Love and Hip Hop, you look like a bitch-ass nigga because I saw Consequence still on you. I saw Safari call you the fuck out and you did nothing. I saw you verbally and mentally abuse women, but them niggas could talk that shit. I saw all that. So you look like a bitch on Love and Hip Hop. In your rap career, you look like a sucker. Pump it up with, the, with your only, you a one hit wonder. And you going to bad mouth him and them. Like, Slaughterhouse, you look like a bitch because you, you could have just manned up. But you retired to get out of that situation. You retired from rap because your Slaughterhouse shit wasn't working. And you didn't want to, you know, so we know. Now you just look, you look worse. This is the worst you've ever looked, Joe Buttons. And that's saying a lot from a fucking bitch nigga like you. And that's it. So I'm going to end this. And how I'm going to end this, I got to, I got to, hold on. I got to look for it. I'm sorry. Give me a second. Give me a second. Because I promise, I promise I was going to give her some props. I promise I was going to give her a shout out. So I got to do it. I got to do it. Um, I got to do it. Okay. So now I can't do it because I don't know where it is. Oh, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Okay. No, no messages. Fucking, fucking up. Give me a second. Here we go. All right, I got it right here. No, no messages. Just the fuck. Just calm down. All right, here we are. So, um, my mom's best friend, my second mother, from, you know, she was a mother to me, too. So, she's got a daughter. Her name is Janelle. And she's got some hair care products. And uh, she's got hair growth oil. And it's made with all natural ingredients. It's hair growth oil, and it's made with all natural ingredients. And um, and it says, let me see what it says. It says it's made with flaxseed oil, which repairs damaged hair. To uh, it repairs damaged hair, and it's made. It's known to make the hair grow faster and stronger. It's got tea tree oil in it, which soothes itchy scalp, reduces dandruff, prevents buildup. It's got a uh, black castor oil in there, which moisturizes. 
thickens and strengthens hair, increases blood flow to the scalp, avocado oil, which penetrates and strengthens your hair uh, and moisturizes hair and helps prevent breakage. It's got all of that shit, all that good shit in there. It's, um, it's essential oil benefits. The sweet orange oil is vitamin C that adds moisture to your hair. It has peppermint oil that can um, increase the amount of hair follicles. If you have products that have uh, rosemary oil, which strengthens circulation, prevents dandruff, itchy scalp, and all that hair loss. So um, these is the things that this shit do. And it's called uh, at jaleese.co. So you go to www.jaleese.co, and jaleese is spelled J E L. I S E dot co and you can go there and get on that website and buy some products. Buy some products and don't front, don't front, because you know that they're calling you um small head, bald head. Y'all know y'all out here getting called small head, bald head. Y'all know y'all hearing them kids go nick knack, patty whack. You ain't got no hair in the back. Y'all know y'all hearing that shit. Y'all know y'all bitches out here wearing wigs and not because they look good, but because you ain't got no shit underneath them. You know what I mean? Y'all know. Y'all know, you that bitch, yeah, you that bald head ass bitch. So go ahead on and go here. Once again, jalise.co. Go on on there, www.jalise.co. I'll say it again. Jalise, J-E-L-I-S-E. I spelt it three times. You should be able to get it right. Go there, get these oils, get this hair care product, and, and get some lymph back. Get some, get some, um, get some, what they call it, hang time. Get some of that shit. All right? All right? Stop playing yourself. Stop being out here in these streets, ball head. All right, all right, young ladies. And I'm not mad at you. I mean, you know, I'm not mad at you, but go ahead on. You can you can do it. This hair can be right. Okay, she's got, and it's all natural, all natural products. Ain't that shit from the hair store. So go ahead on and get you some of that. And 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 the rest of you, y'all can get you some more of this. So go ahead on. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe and like. And come back for more. If you want Anchor, Spotify, just um, just keep coming back, keep listening, and uh, tell your friends, tell your family, tell them roaches in your crib. I don't care. I will take a roach listen. So tell the roaches in your crib too. Tell the mice. Tell everybody. Tell the babies. I don't care. I don't care. I'm influencing children. I don't give a fuck. Tell everybody to listen to listen to podcasts. And um, I'll see you next time.